I've just been sent a Sir Ron frame by one of our most active Discord members, so I could work on some ideas that I've had for a long time. In return for the loan of the frame, I'll be helping them with some custom parts for battery projects and a few bike builds that they've got going on. I have a fairly intimate knowledge of the Sir Ron upgrade scene due to the people that I've worked with over the last few years, so it's quite amusing in a way that this is actually the first time I've really been able to get a frame and see what it's all about. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with it. It's one of the best looking, best design frames that I've ever seen. It looks the business like a cat getting ready to spring into action. Siron actually has another more powerful e-bike called the Stormbeat, and you can see it here in the photo that I'm showing. It's okay, but when you put it side by side with this original frame, you can see just how good the design was on this frame. It's very unique, it's very dynamic, and it's very impactful. It's just such a unique beastie in its looks. And the Storm B to me looks, I don't know, kind of bland in comparison, really. The battery is like really easy to swap out on these kind of bikes because you have a key back here. And uh, if I turn that, it simply opens up. So the battery just drops into this compartment here, which is, which is awesome. It's like a super fast swap, probably the fastest battery swap you can get on an e-bike. Um, it also has this plate here at the bottom and that's not actually really holding it up. It's uh, this subframe underneath that that's holding up as well. So I think this part can actually come out and that might let you squeeze out a bit more room for a, for a bigger battery. Um, but I've got a few ideas for making uh, maybe a different version of the lid or modifying the lid to allow you to have a larger battery in here by a little bit. Um, maybe reuse this mechanism here, reuse some of this hardware here. Um, unfortunately, this is one of these bikes that was left out in the Seattle rain and there's a few bolts that are um, kind of frozen into place and stripped. So I'm going to have to get those out before I can look at maybe doing some modifications down there with the, uh, with the battery. But it's an awesome system for putting the battery in for sure. One of the main things that I wanted to do was to have a crack at the mount for the ASI controllers. The early upgrade kits used 3D printed parts but ran into problems with stress cracking and I think that I can use my design skills to make a better one and do 3D printing some justice. Now I have a frame, I can try out a whole load of ideas and see what I can come up with. And the first thing I noticed when I started really looking at this frame was how the controllers are bolted on to brackets that are themselves bolted onto the frame. Uh, you have one that goes up at the top here and you have these other two arms that sit down at the bottom there. So I start thinking that if you already have the mounting points here on the frame, why not just bolt directly onto these ones rather than using these, which were really designed for the original stock X controller. Um, so I'll show you what I've made so far for the ASI controller and see how it's going so far. So this is what I've got so far. And this is with uh, a back 2000, which I think really is kind of an underutilized controller for with the Suron because it'll give you a nice boost in power without having to spend like thousands of dollars on you know subsequent upgrades. So anyway, I've made this piece uh, which bolts straight onto the subframe and it gets rid of uh, gets rid of this part here and then I have it hinged on here. And then I am going to be making a lower mounting bracket here. Um, not quite decided what I'm going to use yet and there's probably going to be a lot of changes made to, made to this but yeah this is what I've got so far and I'm trying to get it as tight as possible to the frame here so that you don't have it really kind of sticking out quite so far and uh, if I turn it around yeah you can see just try and try and keep it in this profile rather than having it jutting way out in front of the bike. I have to say that I do love this frame. It's absolutely covered in different mounting points, which makes it really easy to bolt stuff on, really easy to modify stuff. It's a really iconic design, and I just wish they would make the frame set available so that people could just spec it out however they wanted to without getting all the stock stuff that comes with it. Because if you think about it, you can buy a brand new Suron for about 3,600 bucks or in Monopoly money here, it's 5,800 bucks. 
And to get it to top a range spec, you need to drop another, I don't know, 12,000 or so on an upgrade kit, whether it's ASI or nuclear. And then another 1,600 to 2,000 bucks on a high power battery. And then you need to upgrade the shocks for another 2,000 or so. And you kind of get the picture because to truly hot rod this bike, you're replacing the majority of its components. Guys spend like $10,000 on these bikes, removing one performance bottleneck after another. So even if Sir One kind of sold the frame motor for say 2,000, it would probably still be worth it if you wanted to spec out the rest. I just don't see that happening anytime soon. But fortunately, because there are so many of these bikes being made, I think that secondhand frames like this one will probably become more available for people to make project bikes with, just like this one that's made its way to me. I have this frame on loan for a while, so if people have ideas about what I should make, let me know in the comments. Maybe together as a community, we can get some older Sir on frames modified to make some really unique and cool vehicles. Thanks for watching the channel. Cheers.